Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today, we're gonna to be talking about noble gas configurations. This is basically a shortcut, an abbreviation to writing electron configurations. And the reason you'd wanna do that is take a look below. You can see this long string of letters and numbers, and that turns out to be the electron configuration for gold. And nobody wants to write that, that's a pain in the butt. So what we do is we shorten it, and we shorten it with noble gas configurations, and I'll show you how to do that in this video. Remember, when we look at electron configurations, what we're thinking about is how many electrons are in each orbital. So we can see that, for example, right here, we have the 1s orbital, and there's two electrons in it. Next, we have the 2s orbital, also with two electrons. Then we have the 2p orbital, three electrons. Okay, so if we have this really long, ugly gold electron configuration, which tells us where all the electrons go, what does it look like if we use noble gas configurations? Well, much better. That's the noble gas configuration of gold. You can see that it's written much more succinctly. And you don't have to spend nearly as much time steering at the periodic table writing electron configurations. Now, if you're not sure what electron configurations are, or you don't know how to use the periodic table to write them, check out the videos that you can see pop up around me right now. Go see those first and then come back. All right, so how do we use noble gas configuration? Well, it's pretty simple. What we're gonna do is first we're gonna write the noble gas in the row above the element that you're trying to write an electron configuration for. A couple things to tell you about there. What's a noble gas? Well, that's in that far uh, row over here, the far column over here. So you can see I boxed it in blue and everything on this column, even going below Krypton, all the way down to the bottom of the periodic table, is a noble gas. And so we use those guys to basically abbreviate our electron configurations. And all we do is we go to the element that we're trying to write the electron configuration for, and we go one row up and we see what noble gas is there. So for example, here we wanna write the electron configuration for chlorine. So I go to chlorine on the periodic table. Where's chlorine? It's right here. So I see chlorines right there, and all I wanna do is go up to the previous row, so one row up, what noble gas is there? Well, neon. So neon is the noble gas a row up from chlorine. So we go one up, and now I start my electron configuration by just writing neon in brackets. So I write neon in brackets. N, get a better N there, N, E. And what that's telling me is we're starting off with the electron configuration of neon. The core of our electrons look exactly like neon. So I don't need to write out 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 every single time. It's a waste of my time. I can just say it looks like neon. And you can remember that neon has that electron configuration. So we're writing the chlorine elect um, electron configuration. We're starting now just after neon. Because we said looks like neon so far. And now we're going to go to the next row. So we got through all the electrons leading up to neon. And we just use our periodic table trick and continue. We've gone to neon and now we go to the next row and we see that we go through 3s. So we write 3s2. And then we see that we go across and this is the 3p row. And we go through aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur to, to chlorine. So we've gone through five elements there. And that means that there's five electrons in the p orbital. So we have 3s2, 3p5. And that's it. So the main trick is figuring out which noble gas you need to use. It's just one row up. That's the noble gas you use. But once you do that, then you use the periodic table trick from that noble gas, just like you would have before, and you can write your noble gas configuration, and it's much shorter. All right, let's do another example. Here we want to write oxygen. So oxygen's right here, over at element number eight, and we want to know what noble gas is just above it. Well, helium's just above it. And helium's a noble gas, so usually, right, we see helium right here. Now, helium's technically a part of the S block, which is why I've grouped it way over here. But that's the noble gas on the row above oxygen, helium. If you put it in the right spot on the periodic table, then you can see that helium's a noble gas. So helium is the noble gas right above oxygen. And so we just start with helium. And what we're saying is, the first electrons that we have look exactly like the electron configuration of helium. And then we continue with our periodic table trick. And you'd see that we'd go through lithium and beryllium, and that would give us 2s2. And then we go in to the 2p row, and we go all the way to oxygen. So that passes through four boxes. So we have 2s2, um, 2p4. And that's the, the noble gas configuration for oxygen. We have the same core electrons as helium. 
And then we have 2s2 and 2p4. And so that's the noble gas configuration for oxygen. Let's do another one. Here, we're going to do titanium. So this is where the noble gas configuration really starts to save you some time. When we get lower down in the periodic table, you save a lot of stuff that you would have to written, like in the case of gold, right? So if we look at titanium, which is Ti, it's element number 22. That's this guy right here. Then we go one row up. So what's one row up? Well, over here is one row up, and over here is one row up. So the 3P row is where we look. And we see that the noble gas there, that's the noble gas in this column, is argon. So that's the noble gas one row up. We're always going to be looking at the elements in that last column there because that's where noble gases hang out. And we see that argon is that gas that's right above titanium. And so we start off by writing argon. And then we continue our periodic table trick. So we go from argon, and now we see that the next place we're going to go is the 4s row. Right, because we were right here, and then we go, um, uh, and then we go one row down, so we can continue left to right. And so that means since we passed through the 4s row, we have argon 4s2, and then we're going to cross into titanium's row 3d, and we cross through two boxes there, so we're going to get 3d2. And there is the noble gas configuration for titanium. Now, where it's really useful is a case like gold. And so gold is way down the periodic table list. Gold's all the way down here. So we still follow our same steps. We look one row up and we look for the noble gas. So we go one row up and all the way over, we see xenon. So that's one row up and all the way over. So that's what we start with. We start by writing xenon. We write it in brackets. And then we continue our periodic table trick from that spot. So we go this way and down, and we'll go into our next row. And now you might ask yourself, ah, what row is this? I have no idea, I haven't been doing it. And that's where you may have to count. So remember our top box is the 1S, and then our second box is the 2S, our third box is the 3S, our fourth set of boxes is the 4S, this is five. So that must mean we're in the 6S. So that means we're gonna write 6S2 to start out. And then you notice we go into this little box with the asterisk, and it says 57 through 70. That means that we're going into the 4F. And so here's the 4F right here. And we're going all the way through the 4F. So it turns out there's 14 elements in that 4F row, and 14 electrons can fit into the F orbital. So we write 4F and then a 14, because it's full. Once we do that, we exit this box. Because remember that if the periodic table was written correctly, this whole thing here would be written up here, and you get a much longer periodic table. Though, so this kind of just compresses it. And once we've gone through that full 4F row, we go back in, and now we're headed into the D block. Again, you might ask yourself, where am I? Remember that the D block starts at 3, so that top element starts row 3. Then we have row 4, and this is row 5. And we're going to go all the way over in row 5 until we get to gold. And when we do that, we can count the elements. We have one element, two elements, three elements, four elements, five elements, six elements, seven elements, eight elements, finally nine. So that means there's nine electrons in our 5D orbital. So it goes 5D9. So this is where we really save time with the electron, with the noble gas configuration. Once we are really low down on the periodic cable, it's a nice shortcut to have. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Also subscribe to receive updates about future videos.